Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. It is October 21st, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see Alaska, Yukon, BC, Washington, and Oregon here. Check out our first system moving into the Pacific Northwest as we go through this weekend, bringing some light precipitation with it and cooling things down a bit here across Pacific Northwest. We have set some record highs here over the last few days, and we're going to drop down from those lofty heights, and we're going to bring some cooler air in with this initial system, but then all eyes are on this polar low up here swinging across some of Alaska, the Yukon and Northwest Territories. It's going to try to bring some of that cold air down the coast of British Columbia here. Some model disagreement on just how much cold air is going to spread down across the Pacific Northwest here. We'll take a look at that as we go through the video here today. Friday's record highs. Check it out. Wenatchee and Euphrata breaking record highs set back in 2013 and 2003. There's a nice warm day. Actually shattered that record by four degrees here and Euphrata broke theirs by two. Helena, Montana also set a record high for yesterday that was set back in 1920. One. And here's Pendleton, Oregon. Kind of gives a good idea of precipitation amounts can be expected with this first round as it goes through on this weekend. And you can see the temperatures cooling down as we go through the early and midweek portion here coming up. Some places dropping off by over 20 degrees by the time you go from Saturday on in through Wednesday and Thursday. And you can see these chilly minimum forecasts as well. Some overnight lows dropping down into the 30s here and potentially even colder. Watch that in some of the video here as we go today. And this is snow for northwest Montana. Confidence starting to increase here. Heavy snow possible. Of course, the higher terrain is going to be favored, but you could have some impacts down into the valleys as well. Nice graphic from National Weather Service, Missoula, Montana. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station to record all this crazy weather we get here across Pacific Northwest, uh, check this one out because this is a nice, affordable option. Click on that link down below to save 10% off. Make sure that code is in when you check out. And you can see it's all solar powered. No batteries. Lightning detection system with it as well temperature humidity it's got an ultrasonic anemometer it's really fun little station now taking a look at what's been going on the gfs and the european have been having some disagreement on just how much cold air is going to spill south still some disagreement but they are coming into a little bit of agreement as well it's not quite as dramatic as it was yesterday but here we go with the initial system moving into the west coast here and you can kind of see this polar lobe swinging down here and now watch this kind of come across british columbia here and look at the gfs it's not been wavering. It's been pretty consistent, bringing some cold air out off the continent here and developing a system, bringing some interesting snowfall totals for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. It's definitely been the colder of the two models between the GFS and the European, actually colder than a yesterday afternoon's run here as well. So yeah, the GFS not backing down here, big ridge steering this north flow and the colder air down across the region. And you can then see this colder air sweep down across the inner mountain west there. Take a look at the European here in a moment but first let's look at the gfs total snow this is 10 to 1 ratio and i want to keep continue to show this the gfs has been pretty steadfast bringing some pretty hefty amounts to some of the cascades of washington oregon actually with pretty good coating for the olympic mountains as well and it brings some to british columbia here but the big amounts here with better moisture coming in off the pacific ocean for the cascades of washington and oregon this would bring some nice snowfall across places like yellowstone a lot of montana as well some of the blue mountains bitter roots yeah so interesting stuff uh, very cold air mass continues to be shown by the GFS. Now let's take a look at the European. This is last night's run versus a yesterday morning's run here. So I kind of want to see the trend here as we go. You can see the initial system coming in. Here goes our polar lobe swinging down the coastline here. And you can see yesterday's run really kept the, most of that cold air across British Columbia, which would have brought a lot of snowfall for British Columbia and not so much for Washington and Oregon. But look at it's starting to move south a little bit here. You kind of see that opening up on the Pacific Northwest and kind of a reinforcing shot here later into the week. And you can see yesterday morning's run kind of keeping most of that cold air bottled up across BC and Alberta there. So you can see actually the European kind of going towards the GFS's route here a little bit. So let's also check out the European Ensemble mean here. We're comparing it last night versus yesterday afternoons here on the right. And again with Alaska, BC, Washington there. Put it into motion. Here's our initial system into the West Coast. Then this polar lobe swinging down. What did the Ensemble say? Definite change from yesterday as it shows much more cold air getting out over the Pacific Northwest here. As you can see, much more bottled up across the interior portion of Canada here. But a big ridge here, north flow. And again, this is going to be a tricky forecast. And this is bound to change here again over the next couple of days. We'll continue to watch it, but not a bad trend here for snow lovers across the Cascades of Washington for sure. Now, this is what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This is 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. You got the Yukon, BC, Washington, Oregon here. Put it into motion. This is 
is last night's GFS trying to can see that very cold air aloft swinging across Canada and it kind of drops this polar lobe right down across Pacific Northwest here and a very fickle forecast here because if any of this cold air doesn't make it down in here it changes the entire dynamic of the low pressure system off the coastline here and it limits how much snowfall we're going to get across some of the mountains here so it's a tricky forecast and I keep watching for the change to come here and we showed signs of it and now we're bouncing back the other way it's bringing that cold air back down into the region on the European the GFS again nice and steadfast been pretty consistent with its messaging here now looking at the European Stampede Pass check it out in a 24 hour period it shows up over 22 inches of snowfall we're a little ways out here but just going to show on you that it does show some impressive totals for the Cascades also take caution some of these ensemble members don't show anything here but there is pretty good agreement that some snow is coming for the Cascades but that's largely dependent on the trajectory of that cold air which can change in a heartbeat here let me tell you folks Pacific Northwest is famous for taking cold air shots away but now looking at Bellingham if you see some of this on social media we're not expecting lowland snowfall even some of the ensemble members kind of hint at it a little bit there we're not really expecting it the ground is kind of warm this time of year and we're not expecting accumulations down to sea level by any mean this is Snoqualmie Pass, the control run up over 20 inches in a 24-hour period again, and some impressive totals showing up in the ensembles as well. So let's hope that uh, cold air trajectory keeps continuing across the area for all the snow lovers here across Washington, Oregon. And this is Mount Baker, something similar there, about a 16-inch total there in a 24-hour period. But you can see the mean is much lower towards 4 or 5 inches. This is Whistler, you know, a nice shot of snowfall would be M coming for portions of a uh, British Columbia here as well, as well as Alberta and some of the Rocky Mountains out there also. So it's something we'll be continuing to watch here. This is the cross section. You can see the warm air over us and we've been having some nice warm temperatures, but the much colder air aloft arriving here shown on the GFS as of last night's run here. You notice the freezing level doesn't get down towards the surface there. However, we're still pretty early in the season here in October. Now looking at Spokane and the GFS, check it out though. Look at some of those freezing levels crashing all the way down towards the surface out there across some of eastern Washington. Some of these overnight lows are going to be downright chilly if this cold air does make it out. And you can see that polar lobe and the very cold air aloft. What we're looking at here again is a cross section. So this would be the surface there in Spokane. This would be about 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. That's from sea level. And then you can see at the top of this would be 10,000 feet above sea level, about 700 millibars. Now looking at the GFS ensemble mean, let's see, take a look at what it shows here for total snow 10 to 1 ratio as we scroll on into monday you can see some of the snow flying here across the rocky mountains of british columbia and alberta and then that snow starts across the cascades of washington oregon nice amount showing up here in the gfs ensemble mean all the way across yellowstone montana some of the bitterroot there blue mountains out there so yeah nice early season snowfall could be had out of this if this trajectory continues with that cold air now taking a look at what the systems would look like we've got the european on the left versus the gfs on the right the initial system rolls through here bringing its light precipitation then that colder air starts to arrive out of the north and look at the low pressure system the european spawns right off of vancouver island here has an atmospheric river feature with it as well and if i back up a little bit you can see the initial system here much more of a troughing setup here with the gfs but much colder air arrives with it and you can see this is a much more progressive system here on the GFS the colder air would arrive quicker and the precipitation would end quicker but look at the European just pounding this powerful atmospheric river into some of British Columbia Washington down the Oregon coastline here as we go on in through next week and kind of continuing on all the way into Thursday night and probably on into Friday morning if that were to verify but the much colder air mass would just blast down across cutting the precipitation off much sooner on last night's GFS run now looking at total precipitation in inches and the European, uh, so initially here, there goes the first system, but the European, I mean, it just plasters Washington and the Oregon coastline here. Some areas up over four inches of precipitation can't be rolled out there. So big differences in what will actually occur between the European and the GFS. Details where you're going to be working out here over the next couple of days. Now we're looking here at daily two meter max temperature here. And if we scroll ahead here, this is for Sunday. There's Monday. Look at some of these temperatures just cool down as we go through next week here. And this is the blend of the model. So you're taking the European and the GFS into account here as well. So look at some of these temperatures down into the 20s, even low 20s for some of eastern Washington, eastern Oregon. Cascades cooling way down. Look at British Columbia. Nice and chilly overnight lows here. So be ready off in the backcountry and all my rural people out there. Get ready for this nice cold shot here. At least be prepared for it because it's got a chance to bring some much chillier weather here. 
Now, taking a look here at the precipitable water, and again, we got the European on the left versus the GFS on the right, just kind of showing what's coming here. You can see the colder air starts to arrive here, it forms that storm here, and you can see the atmospheric river on the European, but no semblance of that here on the GFS as the precipitation would get cut off much quicker here. And you can kind of see that unfolding with that atmospheric river potential as we go through the mid portion of next week. So big differences still in what kind of weather we're going to expect here across Pacific Northwest. And this is looking at the European, shows a category three there across some of the Washington, Oregon coast. But if we switch to the GFS, look at that, doesn't show anything. A much more progressive system on the GFS, like I mentioned. Now, taking a look at the European on the left versus the GFS on the right, this is two meter temperature anomaly here. So let's put it into motion. And as we go on in through Monday, you can see some of that colder air arriving for British Columbia again. And then look at that temperature difference here. It's a much colder air rise than the GFS. Some places across Montana looking at 30 degrees below average for this time of year. Still pretty chilly here on the European as well. But you can also see much warmer across portions of Oregon, Idaho, and Wyoming versus the GFS. Again, bringing that very cold air mass down across much of the West. So big model difficulty. Uh, disagreements still exist, but the European has trended a bit colder and did bring some of that snow further south into Washington and Oregon. So something fun to continue to watch there over the next few days. Hope you guys are liking these videos. I will be working the next few days as well, but my daily briefings will still be coming out as per normal. And hopefully I will be able to get out there and maybe chase some snowfall across the higher terrain on th in through next week, or maybe we'll get some atmospheric river action in here as well, or maybe some very cold temperatures here, especially east of the Cascades. But anyway, um, yeah, so what else is new here? I sent off one of the coffee mugs there yesterday, and yeah, so I'm going to continue to do giveaways like that as we go. Probably have a weather station giveaway here over the next few weeks as well, so... Um, shout out to all my members out there. You guys make this channel possible. Um, it, you know, appreciate you very much there. And so I'll do my regular briefing tomorrow. We'll check out all this new information coming in. It's always fun to watch these systems and see how they unfold. So anyway, um, we'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.